next on Breed All About It. Howdy ho! Go, John, come on, boy. Their family lines date back to Alexander the Great. To the Egyptians, the dog was a, was a hunting dog. A breed built for speed that still dominates the desert. Fast, well, except when it comes to obedience. They don't have the mentality of what can I do for you. It's like, I'll negotiate with you maybe. Uh, what's in it for me? The great sovereign of the sand is the Saluki. Sure, they have dainty features and a delicate gait, but don't mistake this breed for weaklings. Their kind has been around since before Abraham and Moses. It's even been said that the word dog in the Bible always referred to a Saluki. Egyptian pharaohs had the dog's bodies mummified alongside their own, and sketches of the blessed creatures adorn their tombs. Even today, the Saluki remains the only dog allowed to sleep on the rugs of a sheik's tent. The Persian breed's powers are disguised behind a gentle frame. Built like a greyhound, but with feathered ears, tail and legs. Their build is both muscular and statuesque. From the Caspian Sea to the Sahara, this breed still soars through the sands of its forefathers. Few people can grasp the full scope of the breed's history, but it's author and historian Gail Goodman's pursuit. When I started here 25 years ago, I didn't know much about Salukis, and I learned a great deal over all that time. Gail has journeyed more than 7,000 miles from her desert home in Arizona to the desolate Negev Desert in southern Israel. She first learned of Salukis when she lived here 25 years ago. Now she's back home on foreign soil. It was a chance to, to see a wide range of, of Arab-bred Salukis and Bedouin-bred Salukis. The nomads of the desert have bred the dogs for centuries. The Israeli who bred my Salukis got them from Bedouin. And the Bedouin that he got them from are in Sinai. And had it not been for them, I wouldn't have this enduring passion for Salukis. More than 100,000 Bedouin call the Negev Desert home. They carry on centuries-old traditions of living in sparse huts, baking pita bread, and raising Salukis. Gail has come to visit Jama Abu Kawish, a Saluki breeder. While many Bedouins have migrated to towns, Jama lives as humbly as his ancestors, in a tent woven from goat's wool. It's a man's world where women are rarely seen in public and are not part of the socializing. Gail asks her place and is warmly invited to join the men. Okay. Uh, the Scud? Scud. Okay. The Varda. 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 Okay. Records of the dog's lineage are passed on for future generations. This allows the families to develop the sturdiest Salukis, capable of thriving in the harshest and hottest of environments. They're a testament to the adage, survival of the fittest. <laughs> The breeder's five-year-old male is a swift runner with sturdy hind legs and a properly contoured back. 
אוקיי, אז ככה, אז זאת אומרת שהכלף הזה בנוי טוב. בנוי טוב. הגף שלו כאן מתכופף יותר. אם זה ככה. בריצה. אבל איך, אם זה כזה, אם הוא בנוי ככה? אם הוא בנוי ככה? זה טוב. זה טוב מאוד. The breed also needs great lung capacity. שהוא עמוק למטה, יש לו ריצה חזק. ואם הוא עמוק ורחב, יש לו את הנשימה יותר גדול. אז הוא סובל. הכלב הזה הוא רחב. כשאתה אומר סובל, אתה מתכוון... מרחק. מרחק. הוא יכול להמשיך? ימשיך. The prized athletes surpass all others for their running abilities. A dog can run 30 miles an hour maximum. A Saluki can run 50, 55 miles an hour. The men believe the Saluki is the perfect animal and hold him high above most other possessions. Only the purebred horse and the camel are his equal. If you call a Saluki a dog, he will get mad at you. You're insulting him. He's not a dog. He's a Saluki. Many Muslims consider the Saluki sacred, a gift from Allah. As such, the game that the sighthound catches is acceptable to eat. The Saluki hunts in a distinct and unusual fashion, in tandem with a falcon or hawk. The scenario worked the same for centuries. The Bedouin hunter releases the bird of prey in search of gazelles or smaller game. When the falcon spots a herd or other target, he begins to circle. The hunter then releases the Salukis to follow in the direction of the circling hawk. The coursing hounds then single out their mark. The trained Saluki catches the prey but waits for the hunter to make the kill. The tradition is consistent throughout nomad communities. Because the breed is spread out to Bedouins across many desert lands, the breed varies slightly depending on where you travel. Regardless of location, the Saluki's build includes firm and hard feet with hair between the toes to help protect the pads from extreme conditions. Gail traveled to another Bedouin community and say hello to continue researching and tracing the breed's lineage. Shana v'shloshat chodeshim, one year and three months. Okay. Sami Abu Kiev Salukis come from Jumma's camp. For these nomads, dog breeding is a way of life. At one time, the Saluki was all that stood between the Arab and starvation. It was not always possible to buy meat or poultry, especially meat. So the Saluki would supply it. Every day it would catch something. Nowadays, it's illegal under Israeli law to hunt anything with dogs. The Bedouin complain Israeli law ignores their cultural heritage. The Bedouins have since turned the hunt into more of a sport. So we compete. The other group says, my dog is the best, and I say, mine is the best. So we compete and we determine who wins. And even in the desert, dogs will be dogs. They enjoy the chase, even if the mechanical beast has replaced the living, breathing one. It's training. It keeps the dog in shape. The Saluki's days of being the four-legged provider have passed. Today he serves man as a sporting companion, but his value remains priceless. Once somebody wanted to buy one of my Salukis for 6,000 shkalim, which is about $1,500. I wouldn't sell it even if they pay me additional 20,000 shkalim. Every person has his own special fun. Every person has a, an addiction that gives one satisfaction. The Saluki is our style. This is our pride. People on both sides of the world share this enjoyment of the breed. That's really a wonderful thing that everybody can come together about Salukis. And I didn't think of that when I started this trip. So it's really, it's really very nice. You are such a cutie. Oh, you're gorgeous. You are so cute!
Deep in the arid plains of New Mexico, All right. Joseph Miner and Robert Place train and condition their seven Salukis for competition. All right, come on. This is what you call free coursing that we're doing. Just letting the dogs run loose, and it prepares the dogs for the actual open field coursing that we do in competition. The Salukis probably look for wild jackrabbits, just like their ancestors. But here, a catch is rare, as are the hare. Uh, only one out of ten times, uh, I estimate, will they catch the rabbit. So, you know, even the best of dogs. So, don't underestimate those hares. <laughs> we try to keep them fit. This is what they love to do. These dogs can course for two to three miles. It's not unusual for them because they are endurance runners and they can average over a long course of two to three miles they can average 30 miles per hour over shorter distances salukis have been clock sprinting at more than 45 miles an hour just like their arab cousins they are thin dogs so they're pretty aerodynamic they have a very deep chest that allows plenty of oxygen and a large heart for the endurance running that they need to do Salukis were also bred as pack animals and often hunted in groups of two to six dogs. Like all sighthounds, Salukis chase anything that moves. That includes cars. Such habits create serious hazards for the breed that bounds by in a blink. They will run after anything moving, so if someone's on a bicycle, they will want to go after it and, and just run along with the bicycle. And it kind of scares people when there are seven dogs coming at them, so... <laughs> This morning's jaunt is merely a warm-up for today's lure coursing competition. Joseph, Robert, and the Salukis head home for their gear. Come on, Sal. Come on. Come on, Joy. Seven Saluki entering a household in succession is a sight, but nothing more than commonplace here. They're very even tempered and uh, so you can have seven Salukis in the house and they find their corner on the couch and we sit on the floor and on the carpet to watch TV and the dogs get the couch. <laughs> Just grab their collars and their blankets for coursing and their leads and we're ready to go. Come on guys, come on. Jai, come on, come on, let's go, come on. These owners' hounds run the gamut in color and coat style. They come in white, tan, creams, reds, grizzles, black and tan. They also come in two tones and triple colors. Although colors are as wide ranging as a Saluki in an open field, coat style only comes two ways. The smooth variety and the, and the feathered. Smooths are now gaining popularity in the U.S., but before, people were more interested in the feathered variety in England and in the U.S. Today's main feature, the feathered black and tan. Jai is running up against her distant cousins, the Greyhound and the Whippet. Coursing clubs across the country hold lure competitions for every type of sighthound. Hounds that use their sight instead of smell to find prey have existed for millennia. The Saluki is believed to be one of the oldest. Charlie. The Greyhound is another. Similar in build and known for its fast speeds on the racetrack. The Whippet is cousin to both and is typically smaller in stature. Both the Whippet and the Greyhound are known for their sprinting abilities. It's been said the Persian Hound may have the best vision. But who's the fastest in the hunt? When they run neck and neck, everyone's opinion chimes just about the same. I kind of expect the Saluki to win. I would say it's probably between the Saluki and the Whippet. The Saluki, of course, is the endurance dog. The Greyhound is faster, but of course it takes the turns a little bit wider. A good Saluki can probably beat a good whippet. It's up for grabs. <laughs> the setup is a plastic lure that runs along a motorized track at a pretty fast speed. The lure travels the length of more than seven football fields with four turns. The configuration varies from day to day, creating new challenges for the hounds. In olden days, hunters would call out tally-ho at the first sighting of a fox. Now it serves as the starting gun. Are you ready, Jai? Ready to run? Tally-ho! Go, Jai, come on, boy! Initially, the greyhounds have the top speeds. 
after say a thousand yards, then the Saluki will take over a course and will go right by a Greyhound. And Saluki Jai does just that. Now it's a matter of endurance, which Salukis have in abundance. Oh, that was a great run. Yes, Jai really kicked out. The Saluki goes the distance, Jai wins, the Greyhound places, and the Whippet shows. But there's more coursing to come. Mystery off the pigeon. Watch me off the pigeon. When it comes to describing the Saluki's personality, one adjective stands out, aloof. Missed, missed. Pay attention, I'm over here. The original breeders in the Middle East created the Saluki to be aloof so that strangers were unable to coax a dog away from home. He's out in front, he's leading, he's winning, yay. But the Saluki's carefree attitude also makes it uninterested in serving an owner. Come back here, honey. Honey, come here, miss. Salukis honey, prefer good. coexistence over servitude. They don't have the mentality of what can I do for you, what more can I do for you. It's like, I'll negotiate with you maybe, uh, what's in it for me kind of thing. The dog's independent nature attracted Sherry and Ken Fairman to the breed. And their attitude towards them garnered the dog's positive feedback. Everything the dog does is perfect. All Salukis are born angels. They're perfect canines. Her book on how to train and perfect Salukis reflects her motto. It's all a matter of communicating with them and learning to communicate with them. And that's essentially what um, this, this whole affection training is based on. It. Behrman's do unto others approach helps to train the breed that's been labeled almost untrainable. If you don't want it to chew your furniture, you have to give it really good toys. Cairo, Parker, come. Good boy. Good boy. Salukis usually resist commands such as come, stay, and sit. Good boys. But with the right rewards, they may find obedience irresistible. What else are you going to do for me, huh? You're going to lie down? Lying down's a little tough for some of us. Uh, uh, uh. Let's lie down. Oh, that's not a good lie down. Sherry's become the master distractor. Oh, you're just being fabulous. Yes, you are. Oh, look at him, look at him. Oh, yes. Good boy. Terms of endearment blind the Saluki. Okay, sit down. Sit, 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 sit. Good boy. Stay there. Get him to those choppers. Even to a teeth cleaning. <laughs> Rules are especially critical when walking Salukis in urban settings. That's a good boy. Very good. Very good. Okay. The breed's instinct to hunt is just as real in the city. Good boy, you watch me. Mist, mist, you watch me. Leash laws are critical to critter chasing canines and dogs that become skittish. We took Cairo once and another dog scared him when he was a puppy and he took off and fortunately he did respond to, to my off command and froze just before he hit the highway. It was in 10 seconds he'd gone so far and so fast, it was, it was mind-boggling. City streets by the San Francisco Bay are a far cry from the Saluki's free desert reign. The breed's introduction to the United States came via Britain. Lady Florence Amherst was presented with a pair of the Persian hounds in the late 1800s. She adored their looks and inclinations and brought attention to the breed. England officially recognized the Saluki in 1923. America followed suit four years later. Good boy! You're such a good boy! Salukis can live comfortably in a city setting, as long as owners secure the house. All can scale a six-foot fence with ease, so they should never be left alone in the backyard. And inside, be ready to turn the home over to the benevolent dictatorship of a breed used to being held in high regard. Is there very much need to be with people, they very much need to be with their people. 
As long as the human servants never rebel and always treat the ancient ones with kindness. I, I don't know of any dog that does not respond to kindness and love and respect, you know, and that's what works. It's been said the Saluki has a classic far-off look. To see eye to eye with this breed of the barren Middle East, make sure your likes and dislikes are not far off from the Salukis. For health, poor treats. This breed remains rugged and fit thanks to the terrain its ancestors had to conquer. Only one concern, it's very sensitive to anesthesia. Three treats for companionship. Despite its aloof attitude, the Saluki wants, even requires, a close family. The breed's distant demeanor makes training a Saluki a time-intensive task. One treat for trainability. Two treats for upkeep. This breed needs to run. An owner must walk a city Saluki every day and find a place for its four legs to stretch and sprint twice a week. For endurance, four treats. The Saluki has remarkable stamina and it may come the closest to an immortal breed with family roots dating back to at least 7,000 BC. What a pretty dog you are. Gail Goodman's dozen Salukis are flourishing back home in Arizona. Hello, Ona. Ona, 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 Ona. Long before her visit to the Middle East, Gail created a natural habitat for her passion. Later. Risha, sweetie. Hello, 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 hello. And they, in turn, have produced a home environment like their ancestors. Dens and all. You want your ball, huh? You want to eat? Gail has turned her attention from the breed's history to its future. He's an orphan. I certainly hope he makes it. The puppy's mother died in childbirth. But it's Gail's hope this new life will be one more successful link in the breed's evolution. There you go. A family lineage that's expanding in years and distance. The Middle East is a fascinating place. It's one of the early seats of, of civilization, of agriculture, of art, and of hunting. And, and here's this unbroken chain. The Saluki's antiquity and ongoing fortitude make it a breed apart from all others.